Playing with a Ouija board is something that you wouldn't catch me dead doing. Regardless if they're just toys or pieces of plastic or whatever, I just don't like to mess with the unknown and who knows what the heck is out there, so better safe than sorry, right? Welcome back to the swamp, my friends, and welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true Ouija board horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's a Ouija board story or something else, please be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. Now, without any further ado, let's jump right into these creepy and allegedly true Ouija board horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. Listen up, Swamp Folk, before we jump into these allegedly true and creepy cryptid encounter horror stories. Today's episode was sponsored by Magic Spoon. Now, I know what you're thinking. Swamp, what the heck is a Magic Spoon? And contrary to popular belief, it is not a spoon that I got from Merlin deep in the woods. Magic Spoon is an incredibly healthy breakfast cereal meant for adults. Magic Spoon's amazing, and I really enjoy it. With zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only 4 net grams of carbs in each serving. With a total of only 140 calories per serving, this is keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Now anybody who's been following me on social media knows I've been on a fitness journey the last 6 months and will continue in the new year. You know what they say, new year, new you. If you have any health or fitness related New Year's resolutions but aren't sure where to start, you need to try Magic Spoon as a low-carb, high-protein, and zero-sugar alternative. Now, like many, growing up cereal was pretty much a staple in my life. I didn't really like eating big breakfast, so something like cereal was always my go-to. And I really wish I had a magic spoon. I really think it would have been beneficial to me growing up for sure. As you can see on screen, I am enjoying my favorite flavor right now, the chocolate. It is so good. They also have three other flavors so far, fruity, peanut butter, and frosted, and they're all just as good. Now, if you want to try Magic Spoon just like I am, click the link below and get yourself some great Magic Spoon cereal today and help you accomplish your goals in the new year. Grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code SWAMPED at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com swamp. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use code SWAMPED for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash swamped to save $5 today. Hey, kick that habit of bad sugary cereals and get on this trend with me. You know the Swamp Dweller always has your back and is always trying to push those healthy options to you. Anyways, let's jump into these creepy and allegedly true stories that'll freak you out tonight. But first, don't forget to eat your Magic Spoon cereal. Dear Swamp Dweller, I've been listening to your stories for a while. I finally got the courage to share my own. Mind you, the story at the beginning will be a bit hazy, as it happened to me when I was 5. But as my story goes on, because it continued until I was 22, it will become much clearer. When I was growing up, I lived in a small town in Ohio. To protect my family and friends, their names will be changed. Now, I have an older sister who I will call Lucy. We live in a small trailer outside of a small town literally in the middle of nowhere. It would take us 20 minutes to get to any major stores. One night, my sister Lucy was inviting her friend who I will call Jesse over to spend the night and have a sleepover. At the time, me and my sister had shared a room. Jessie was one of my sister's odd friends. She was gothic and into creepy stuff. Not to say there's anything wrong with that, but I was just kind of off-put by it at the time. So, she had brought over a Ouija board. Me being five years old, not understanding the significance of it, I thought it was just some kind of board game. Well, later that night, I want to say sometime around midnight, my sister Lucy and her friend Jessie pulled out the Ouija board and told me to go to bed. After putting a ring of salt around my bed, and around them saying it would protect us. Well, being a little kid, I wanted to see what the big kids were doing. They turned off all the lights and lit a couple of candles. Both sat cross-legged on the floor, 
with their hands on the indicator. Now, I'm not really sure what it's called. Then, they started asking questions. Within a few minutes, they started receiving answers. Both did the normal reaction, which was, did you move it? And they kept blaming each other. After a few minutes, they realized that neither one of them were doing it, and there was an outside force moving it. At one point, whatever was doing it asked them to both lay on the floor. I remember this very clearly. Maybe about 5 to 10 seconds after they laid on the floor, I saw a red orb and white orb enter the room. I was so confused, and I had no idea what was going on. Then, as I watched from my bed, I saw the red orb enter my sister, and the white orb enter Jesse. For a few moments, nothing happened. Neither one of them moved. Then it was like all hell broke loose. Dark shadow figures swarmed over me in my bed. I started to scream. My mother heard all the commotion, and when she came in, I was being lifted off the bed by my hair. My sister and her friend were stuck to the floor and could not move. My mother started chanting something. I couldn't for the life of me tell you what it was that she said. But whatever it was, it worked. I felt my bed and my sister and her friend both sat at the same time. My mother looked at them and then looked at me. She saw the Ouija board on the floor and asked my sister and her friend what they had done. When neither one of them would answer, she asked me. I told her what I saw and what had happened. My mother was angry at my sister and her friend. She took the Ouija board away and went outside to burn it. As I would later learn, that is not the thing to do. For ten years after that, nothing happened. My parents had bought a double-wide trailer and put in a basement foundation to make it look like a real home. When building all of this, we had a lot of problems. The biggest problem that I could remember when we were doing the basement foundation and the back wall of the foundation, it fell in. We chalked it up to nothing but natural occurrences, but it kept happening, and it was a pain in the butt to get it to stay up. I don't even remember what they ended up doing to make sure it didn't happen again. The year I turned 15, my mother had gone to an antique store and bought an antique mirror. She hung it above a 55-gallon aquarium. One day, me, my sister, and my mother were sitting in the dining room. We are all talking about mundane things about our lives. All of a sudden, we heard something running through the house and then a child's laughter, and then my bedroom door slam. Me and my mother and my sister both looked at each other in shock and horror. We had no idea what had just happened. Things continued to get worse from there. There was one morning during the summer I had woken up late from staying up all night. My mother had been working a 70-hour work week and had the day off so she was sleeping in too. When I walked out into the kitchen, I screamed because all the cabinet doors were open and all the dishes were stacked on the counters. It was insane because there were like canned vegetables on top of them, balanced in ways that were just not natural. This was stacked in a way that would be extremely odd for any human being to do. When my mother heard the scream, she came out of her bedroom and saw what had happened. She had started to put the pieces together. So, she did her best to seek help. She talked to my father about it. My father was a skeptic and he had never really, you know, witnessed any of these events, so I don't really think he believed in any such thing. This ends up in an argument between the two of them. Eventually, my mother just waited until he was away for work to go to a Wicca priestess to ask for help. The priestess gave her things to bless the house with. She sent me away to one of my friends and called my sister over who had moved out a while back for some help. I do not know the events that occurred that night. I do not know what really went down, but for at least a year, things were okay after that. Until one night, I was in the living room. The way our living room was set up was that we had one large couch, which was set up against the window next to an end table. On the other end was another end table and a love seat so it was shaped like an L, with the coffee table in the middle. Next to the other end table, at the end of the large couch, was the TV stand. We also had a fireplace in the living room, which was across from the large couch directly opposite. It was a weekend, and I was working on a project for school. My parents were out grocery shopping, so I sat at the coffee table on the floor, working on my project, while watching TV with my back to the fireplace. Suddenly, I got the strange feeling like something was watching me. 
I started looking around, and then I looked at the fireplace. I noticed movement in the fireplace. As I kept on looking at the fireplace intently, I noticed a face. Whatever this thing was, had scraggly hair with cat-like eyes that were green in the most demonic smile I could ever imagine. It had what looked like alligator teeth. I was so entranced by it, I kept on staring at it, and then I decided to draw it. It moved its head back and forth, and finally, it said something to me. It said, I've been with you for many years, and I will never leave. Even when you think I'm gone, I'll still be there. At this point, being scared out of my mind, I ran to grab my house phone and called my mother and told her she needed to get home now. When her and my father got home, they asked me what I was doing in their bedroom. They could see me from the window while they were driving up the driveway. I told them I hadn't even left the living room, I was too scared to move. My parents did not believe me because my mother got upset and told me I shouldn't be telling stories. Two weeks after this event was when things really got bad. My father was away on work again. Me and my mother were sitting in the living room watching TV together. As we were watching TV, we started hearing bangs on our front door. My mother went to check on what it was, and there was no one there. She sat back down and started watching TV with me again. Then we heard footsteps running across the house from my bedroom to their bedroom and the door slamming. The laughter of a child followed it again. Me and my mother both looked shocked to each other. The cabinet doors in the kitchen all started opening and closing and banging hard like somebody was angry. The mirror above the fish tank started vibrating and banging off the wall. At this moment, me and my mother both stood up and ran for her bedroom. She went to her side table and pulled out sage candles and the Bible. She lit the candles and the sage and started repeating a verse from the Bible. I started to become angry and felt sick all of a sudden. After about 20 minutes of her just repeating the verses, everything stopped. She asked me if I was okay, to which I replied I did not feel very well. She put her hand on my forehead and realized I was burning up. A few hours later, after we cleaned up everything, I felt fine. The fever was gone. Many years later, I had entered a bad relationship. When I was around 22, me and my ex decided to go on a night drive. It had been raining for quite a few days and we wanted to get out of the house. We were coming down a steep hill and all of a sudden, something was before us. When I say something, I knew exactly what it was. It was the same scraggly figure I had seen in my fireplace all those years ago. But this time it had a body and it was about six foot tall and it had long claws for hands. My ex slammed on the brakes to try to avoid it and we swerved past it. It reached out towards the car, trying to scratch out at us. Our tires blew out, and he started swerving uncontrollably down a hill with a curved bottom with an embankment. We went over the embankment, and we landed on a bush allowing us to land softly, luckily. My ex had hit his head on the window on the driver's side. I had been wearing my seatbelt and was not injured too bad. He was unconscious for roughly five minutes. Well, I was trying to get out of the car to get help, we landed on the opposite side, so the only way out of the car was through my door on the passenger side. When he finally came to, he helps me open the passenger door and climb out. Mind you, in this moment we were both in shock. He decided he was going to walk back to his house and pull the car out with his truck. He told me to stay there and wait. As I did, the figure appeared again, this time within 10 feet of me. It spoke without moving its mouth with that same demonic smile. I believe it was trying to say something to me, but I couldn't decipher it this time. My ex started coming down the hill with his truck. When the light hit the figure, it disappeared. I didn't tell him what happened. I was too scared and I thought I was still in shock. A few months later, me and him broke up. I have not seen him since, although I have heard about him. And things in his life have gone bad. I don't know if it was the creature's doing or if it was just karma. I do know when I speak about these events that they send chills down my spine. I have not seen the figure since that day. I pray that I never will again. I don't know if it came from the Ouija board or not, but I refuse to have one in my home or around me. Sorry this was long-winded, but this really did happen. I hope you decide to share this on your show. I love listening to your stories and hope you continue with it.
So this happened a long time ago, but I just came across this channel and I thought maybe you would enjoy this story. So I was in middle school at the time. It was the summer between my 7th and 8th grade year. I was about 13 years old at the time. A group of friends and I were all at my girlfriend's house. She lived in a small duplex. We were young and somewhat obsessed, but also very skeptical of spooky stuff. One of us out of the blue suggested, Hey, let's make a Ouija board and try to talk to spirits. I think you can tell where this is going. So, we got out a paper and made a Ouija board and used a shot glass as the planchette. It was all fun and games at first. We all put our fingers on the shot glass and played for a while, but eventually lost most of the group because they got bored of it. We all sat down around after talking for a bit. Two of the girls went upstairs to go to our friend's bedroom to do whatever nonsense, and I got the bright idea to play on the board by myself. I know what you're all thinking. Bad plan. Everyone knows that's a bad plan. But hey, I was 13 and I didn't really believe in any of it. Anyways, I did the thing, and right as I'm about to say goodbye, my two friends run back down to the room that we are all sitting in. One of them lifts their shirt to reveal scratches on their ribs as if someone had dug their nails in and just scratched them up real bad. She looked down at me and screamed at me to say goodbye. I did, of course, and nothing happened after that. Everything was fine, and we all just had a good time. But to this day, I don't know if something paranormal was going on or if it was a weird coincidence. Either way, the girl that got scratched has still brought it up to me every time that I've seen them. When I was 17 years old, my friend George was attacked by something supernatural right in front of me. My friends and I have been very intrigued by Ouija boards towards the end of high school. We spent several nights over a few months, cramming together and hovering over a planchette. We had a variety of experiences using the Ouija board, most of which you could describe as mildly supernatural or just plain old coincidence. One of the places we would frequent was the garage in George's family home. Like most garages, it was dark, damp, and cluttered. George was intrigued by the Ouija board as we all were. That is, until it started to target George. Over the course of different sittings, we would ask it all kinds of questions like who it was, what it wanted, how many fingers are behind my back, stuff like that. We still weren't convinced it was legit. We had the spirit tell us who they were, and when prompted for what they wanted, they replied, kill George. George was justifiably spooked, but to save face, he persevered. A sitting following that, we had asked the same questions, and the conversation developed. A now different spirit had changed its mind and decided it was the previous spirit and it still wanted to kill George. This paired with several events that George had experienced himself in the night that followed had driven George away from our little seances. We, however, were still more than happy to tinker around and were not satisfied yet. On the last night we played with the Ouija board, we set up in George's garage as we usually did. He still let us use his garage and in his presence, he just did not want to participate. That night, it was just George, two girls and me. We turned out the lights and set up the board. We even lit a candle or two for good effect. George and one girl sat across from the other girl and myself. We were all in coats because it was winter and the garage was poorly insulated. The three of us, with our hands on the planchette, had barely even begun when George's coat arm caught on fire. I remember watching him fling his arm around as he tried to smother the flame. I immediately jumped up and turned on the lights. It didn't take long for George to put out the flame. We quickly piled out of the garage into his basement, and after a few moments of panic and confusion, we divert our attention towards George. He took his coat off and swore his arm was fine. There wasn't a single mark on his skin. Then we diverted our attention to the newly charred coat arm. The burn was about the radius of a fist, and it burned deeply through the layers, just shy of the inner layer of cloth. The most startling part was, undeniably, the shape of a goat's hoof. We hid the coat for several days. Once we gained the courage, George and I pulled it back out to debunk our little experience. Unfortunately, 
it was not what we thought it would be. After all, there were open flames in the room, and we had a cigarette in his hand. We applied a cigarette directly to the opposite coat arm, several times. We took a lighter to it in an attempt to simulate the same kind of flame. No matter what we tried, we could not come close to recreating the hoof-like burn. Over time, I thought that maybe George had decided to stage the whole thing to deter us from the Ouija board. He certainly had motive. That was ten years ago. George and I are still great friends. Occasionally, I get confident that I can get him to fess up and I press him on the subject. It's been ten years, and he still has the same response. That he loved that coat, and he was just as surprised and terrified as we were. Personally, I don't believe he staged it. I believe that we experienced something authentic, and my perspective on life has never been the same since. My friends and I were in high school when we came across a Ouija board at Toys R Us. We decided we wanted to try it out and see if it really worked. There were three of us in my basement with the board on the floor, and we began asking the usual questions you might see in any horror movie or paranormal TV show. We started off with the usual, hello, and waited for the board to start working. The planchette slowly began to move, and I accused one of my friends of pushing it. My friends both let go, and I felt the planchette moving on its own with my own hands. I don't really know how to describe the sensation, but it was almost as if a magnet was dragging it across underneath the board. How many people are in the room with us? We asked. Four, the board answered, even though there were only three of us in the room. We then continued to ask, Are you alive? And the planchette slowly dragged itself to no. Are you nice? My friend Jess asked, and the planchette returned to the middle of the board, and then quickly and forcefully moved back to no. I remember at this point, the air felt much heavier, and my heart began to beat faster. I was starting to feel that flight or fight response. What is your name? My friend Sarah asked in a deep and serious tone. The pointer moved its way over to one letter, and then another, and then another, beginning to spell out the name of a demon that I recognized. As it was in the middle of spelling its name out, I gasped and said the name out loud. As I did this, the planchette stopped dead in its tracks, and a long, black millipede crawled out from under my bed and ran over to the board and exited the room underneath the door. My friend screamed, and we quickly got up and put the board back in its box. We didn't quite know what to do with the board, because we heard there is no good way to dispose of it, and burning it could make it worse. So we stored it in the back of my garage, which at the time was a separate building from my house. That night we didn't think much else of what had happened. However, we were still quite freaked out. I remember sleeping with my grandmother's rosary beach by my bed for quite a few nights after that. I am far from religious. It's really funny how stuff like that works. The next day when I woke up, my mom called me outside in a panic. There was a decapitated baby rabbit left merely inches from the front porch steps. Its head was left to the side of its body. I can tell you this, that it's the first time anything like this has ever happened to us. At the time, I lived close to a city, so wild animals usually never really hung around. The following week, I remember getting ill to the point to where I had a high temperature and couldn't get out of bed for days. The illness slowly got better, but it lasted for weeks. My friends, however, were fine. It only seemed to be affecting me. From then on, not much else had happened. However, whenever my dog went downstairs, they would start shaking and running back and forth. If I had any guests stay in the basement, they always reported getting creeped out, especially by the dark hallway in the back, and almost everyone reported having nightmares each time they stayed in the basement. Any small animals, such as fish, hermit crabs, and hamsters who lived in the basement met an untimely death. We eventually decided it was best not to raise anything down there anymore. The strange part about this is that that never happened until this point. In fact, because it was a nice, finished basement with a good amount of sunlight and ventilation, we had animals living down there for over 10 years without a problem. Our family had guinea pigs, rabbits, and frogs that lived healthy lives down there when I was a small child. One time, my little sister slept in the basement 
and she said that she had a horrible nightmare. When she woke up, the closet door opened and there was an old woman sitting there, staring at her, pointing a long, gnarly finger directly at her. Although she didn't say anything, apparently her expression showed a lot of intense emotion. Thinking about what had happened still freaks out my entire family to this very day. Now that I think back at it, I remember that we had these old walkie-talkies from the late 80s or early 90s, and one day we turned it on in the basement, and there was an angry male voice swearing and screaming for a long time. The screaming wasn't really directed at anyone. It was just meaningless, vulgar phrases. Maybe the radio was just picking up on a random person's call. However, it went on for so long that I couldn't imagine someone just sitting there swearing all day. It's been about 10 years now, and I no longer live in that house. Since then, I've had no contact with the new owners of the house, and I do not know whether this stuff still goes on. So, these could have all been coincidences or isolated events, but I think so much happened in a short amount of time that I can't really write it off as such. My girlfriend, now wife, started college back in 2001. She dormed with her sister for a year. Her two best friends also ended up going to the same college, so we would hang out a lot after her classes were over. Me having been kicked out of school for terrible grades would spend all my free time up there when I was not working. Her dorm building had a commons area on the second floor and third floor, and each area had various board games. Her floor just so happened to have a Ouija board as well. We, showing all the grace and intelligence of 18 and 19 year olds, decided to break it out and use it. I was actually excited as I had never used one before, but my girlfriend apparently had. Now before the fun part, it's worth pointing out that this was a Catholic college and her dorm building was also serving as a Catholic high school. Nuns still live on site and there is also a small cemetery next to the dorm where a few nuns were laid to rest. I don't know, and I don't really remember, who started asking questions, but we eventually got a response from someone claiming to be a nun. I'm not sure if this was actually a nun or not. Maybe it was a demon. I can't remember this sister's name to save my life, so forgive me as it's been almost 20 years. We started asking her questions. Who she was, how she passed. The pointer started swinging back and forth after that question, which really freaked us out. And if she was mad about something... Well, it turns out that she was mad that I was there. We asked why she was mad and she spelled out my first name. This really freaked out my girlfriend. We then asked if she wanted me to leave and she replied with yes. My girlfriend hugged me in almost a tearful way and we ended the session. And soon after, I left the campus. Now, there are various ways one could take essentially being chased out by a ghost from a college dorm. I myself find the best possible solution is to drive back to your hometown about 45 minutes from me at the time, go to the local ice cream hotspot, Magic Fountain in Elizabeth, and then order and devour a banana split all by yourself. Maybe this story is more about how I got ice cream instead of the Ouija board, but I still won't touch one ever since. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true Ouija board horror stories. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure that you hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes, and that's incredibly helpful to the swamp. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcast or Spotify, be sure to give this a 5-star rating as that helps me a ton over there, and it's very much appreciated. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's a Ouija board story or something completely different, I'm always looking for all kinds of scary stories to share. Be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you're on the go and don't have YouTube Premium but would like to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about anywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. It's absolutely free and always will be. If you'd like to support The Swamp outside of hitting that like button, subscribing, and giving us a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, maybe check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, and more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads. 
I'd love to know in the comments down below what story tonight was your favorite. I know guys, I always ask this and it's always so tough to pick, but it helps me pick better stories in the future. Don't forget to join me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I'll see you all soon with another creepy episode.